Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five nourishing beverages that I drink throughout my pregnancies. So I am currently expecting baby number four. I am 17-ish weeks at the time of filming this video. And the other day I was thinking about how you know, there's like several different drinks I try and drink every single day or most days. And I thought it actually might make a really good video. I feel like there's so much um, on nutrition and pregnancy, which nutrition is so critical during pregnancy, so it makes sense. But I feel like I never see people necessarily talking about certain drinks that they like to consume. Um, and I definitely have a few. Most of them are just overall like nutritious, nourishing drinks that anyone would benefit from. Um, but there is one in, particu in particular that I only drink during pregnancy. Okay, the very first one is not one that is going to be very surprising to you, but that is drinking water. Water is so, so critical. And you may not think of water as being nourishing because it doesn't actually really provide much in nutritional value, but it does provide hydration. And hydration is important all the time, but especially when you're pregnant. You probably always hear, you know, drink more water, drink more water, because water really is so vital to so many different processes throughout the body, pregnant or not. But when you are in the process of growing a human, there is even additional um, needs for water that you really do need to make sure that you're meeting. So for example, um, when you're pregnant, you your blood volume actually doubles. By the time you're about 20 weeks along or so, it has completely doubled, which is crazy to think about. Um, and you need a lot of water to actually like create like the fluid um, that that blood is like all the, the, the cells in your blood are going to be suspended in. So that is one reason that you need, you have a higher demand for water. Another reason is you need to make amniotic fluid. So you're literally taking that water that you're drinking and you're turning it into the fluid that your baby is literally suspended in and marinating in basically until they're born. Water is also super important for mom's kidney function, for baby's kidney function. It's super important that we're getting enough so that they can, so that your kidneys can carry out all the processes that they need to carry out uh, correctly. Another reason that you wanna drink lots of water, um, an appropriate amount of water when you're pregnant, is actually it can help combat swelling, which you may think that that's like counterintuitive because if you're like holding on to lots of water, you probably don't think that you should drink more water, but in fact, that's exactly what you should do. So the reason that you may get like swelling in your feet and your ankles is because you are retaining water and that is to balance out the level of sodium in your body. So if you don't have enough, um, like water to balance out the level of sodium that you do, you're literally going to retain water so that your body can maintain that very delicate sodium water balance. Now, if you are drinking lots of water and you're very hydrated, you are actually gonna be flushing out any, maybe flushing out sodium that you don't need, or you're just going to be creating that balance on your own without your body having to like retain water all the time. So if you're swelling, you actually need to drink more. Another reason that you wanna be drinking a lot of water in pregnancy is to, especially at the end of pregnancy, um, is you wanna make sure that your uterus is not contracting unnecessarily. You may have heard that if you're dehydrated, it can cause contractions, and that's because your uterus is just like any other muscle. Um, like if you're dehydrated and you go work out and you get a calf cramp, um, it's because you're, that water, sodium, like the fluid balance is off. So you need to make sure, and it's usually because of dehydration, not enough water. So you wanna make sure that you're hydrated and that you're drinking enough, especially if you're like, in your third trimester in the hot, warm months um, so that your uterus isn't contracting unnecessarily and it's not going to like put you into potentially preterm labor. So water is super important. Obviously your um, water, your daily requirement for water is higher when you're pregnant. You can look up and see, you know, exact amount of milliliters you're supposed to be drinking on top of the usual amount. But the best thing, that I always tell people is to actually just look at their own body and what your own body is telling you instead of just going off of a number you read online. And the best way to do that is to look at your urine. 
if it's dark and it's concentrated, if it has a strong odor, um, smells like pee, then you're, pro you're probably dehydrated. You want it to be um, almost clear, like a very pale yellow is what you're shooting for. So when you pee 50 times throughout the day, you've got plenty of chances to check on how hydrated your body is, and that is gonna be the best thing to tell you. The next nourishing drink I try to drink on a very regular, if not daily basis, is bone broth. I actually just finished a mug of bone broth right before I started this video. So I've done an entire video on how to make bone broth easily at home for very, very, very little money. Um, and in that video, I also dive into the specifics of the nutrition aspect. So specifically, what are the nutrients that are in bone broth doing for your body? So if you're curious to have more of a deep dive, I would definitely go watch that video. But bone broth is basically what you simmer, long simmer bones in water and some kind of acidic medium. It basically leaches a lot of the nutrients from the bones into the water, turning it into bone broth. So one of the reasons that I like to drink this on a daily basis is one, it's very nourishing. Um, it has a lot of, um, it has calcium and magnesium. It has a lot of different nutrients in it, but it also is pretty protein rich. When you, it actually will extract a lot of the amino acids from the bones and the ligaments and the tissues and whatever else you're simmering. Um, and amino acids are the building blocks of protein. So there's some specific amino acids um, that really have um, major impacts on how well your gut functions. And I go into it more in more depth in that video, but in general, it is nutritious, meaning it contains a lot of nutrients, but it also is high in protein. So when you're pregnant, um, you have higher protein needs, um, especially in that third trimester, they go so high. So for me, this is a really easy way for me to get a little bit of extra protein in my diet each day. I love drinking it. Um, I put um, salt and pepper in mine so it tastes salty. And in my this pregnancy, I'm craving a lot of salty things. So instead of eating something like potato chips, I will have a cup of bone broth. Um, not to say I haven't had, a few, haven't had a few potato chips in my first trimester when I was craving them. Um, but it's a way for me to like really satisfy that salty craving, but it's actually at the same time providing my body with a lot of nutrients and protein. And it's something that I don't have to sit down and eat. It's not something I have to prepare, which to me is even better because it like literally takes me two seconds to get it on the stove to heat it up. Um, I can go about my day while it's you know heating up and then I can just drink it along with whatever activity I'm doing. And it's just a great way to get in kind of like a snack, um, but without having to like prepare something and sit down and eat it, which when I'm most days honestly feels really difficult to do because life is just crazy with other kids and working and all of that. Um, so I love bone broth for that reason. I make mine at home, like I said, very cheap, very easy. And I store it in um, these big, like one cup ice cube trays. And then I can just pop out one of the frozen cups of bone broth. I stick it in a pot on the stove. It takes like five minutes to melt down and heat up. And then I just add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, put it in a mug, and then I just drink it. It is warm, it's comforting, it's surprisingly delicious. Um, and it's also providing protein and other nutrients for me and baby. Next up, another beverage I try and drink very regularly, if not daily, if I have it, um, is kombucha. So this might be like a little bit controversial because you might read that you're supposed to avoid kombucha during pregnancy because it can have like teeny tiny levels of alcohol in it um, as like a natural process um, from the fermentation, a natural byproduct of the fermentation process. So if you don't know what kombucha is, it's basically fermented sweet tea um, and it is filled with probiotics. It's filled with those, you know, gut loving, gut boosting bacteria that are going to help um, when you're consuming them, it's going to help like rep repopulate, um, diversify, fortify that microbi microbiome in your gut. And your gut health is super important all the time. It's of course important during pregnancy, but then something to think about is when your baby is born, if they're born vaginally, you are the one that are you and your gut bacteria and your vaginal flora. You are the one that is like um, 
you are inoculating them. Is what I meant to say. It's it's vaginal flora, but it all you know supporting that um, microbiome and flora in general is important. Um, and you are the ones that are kind of setting their guts up um, to have their own microbiome. So what you're passing on to them is important. So. When you are consuming fermented foods, kombucha, it would be a fermented drink, um, it's a natural way to get those probiotics. You can also take a probiotic. I still do take a probiotic daily, um, especially when pregnant, but this is something that I like to drink regularly. It's also so satisfying. Um, I feel like most people like kombucha, maybe some don't. I'm, I'm sure there's people that don't, but it's bubbly, it's satisfying. Um, you can make it yourself. Once we move, I'm gonna get back into the flow of making it myself so we can just have like bottles made every week to save money. But um, you can, we buy ours from Costco. The brands that they have tend to fluctuate. Some are better than others. Right now they have Health Aid, which is like a really good brand, which is very exciting to see. So we buy it from Costco in bulk, um, so it's not as expensive. Um, but you can also make it yourself pretty easily at home. So I drink this most of the time, just trying to fortify my gut as much as uh, my gut as much as I possibly can. And something that's really interesting um, in my last pregnancy, which was my third, before I got pregnant, um, I read a lot about histamine and its link to morning sickness potentially. Um, morning sickness is like such a mystery and for me it's not morning sickness, it's all day. But um, so I, and funny enough, fermented foods are high histamine foods. So sauerkraut and sourdough and kombucha and aged cheese, like literally all the things I eat. So I scaled back on a lot of those foods big time. I even scaled back on like taking a probiotic for a little while. Um, because I was trying to not be as sick and it didn't work. I was just as sick. It made no difference. But I actually was GBS positive in my last pregnancy. The other two where I feel like my gut was probably in much better shape because I was eating a lot of fermented foods and I was really on top of taking a probiotic, I was GBS negative. Um, so this pregnancy, I am not messing around. I am enjoying all the fermented foods, um, eating and drinking them as much as possible taking my probiotic so I can hopefully avoid that. Okay, the next um, beverage I wanna talk about, talk about, <laughs> we're really getting controversial here, um, but that is raw milk. Um, I know that not everyone is comfortable drinking raw milk. I personally am if and only if it comes from a trusted source. We source our raw milk from a local farm um, where we live. There is a lot of Amish um, and we actually get ours from an Amish farm from this really sweet family. They, you know, their kids drink this milk um, and it's just a, it's a farm that I really trust. So raw milk, basically milk that is fresh, milk that is untreated, um, it has a ton of nutritional benefit. So. Nutrients specifically, um, we're talking about iron, calcium, um, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, uh, phosphorus, zinc, um, conjugated linoleic acid, also known as CLA, um, and also omega-3 fat. So it packs a major punch when it comes to nutrition, but the problem is when you pasteurize milk, when you heat it to high temperatures, all of that, most of that really gets damaged um, and it's no longer like bioavailable. It's no longer available in the milk to be like consumed and used by our bodies. Um, so it damages a lot of the nutritional benefits when you do pasteurize it. Um, I'm not gonna go into like the rabbit hole that is why did milk become pasteurized in the first place and the controversy and everything like that um, because we'd be here for like an hour. Um, but there is a podcast episode that I've, I mentioned in a previous video too that I think is probably one of the best discussions I've personally come across in the last you know several years on raw milk and explaining the history and from all different angles. So I'll link that down below if you want like more information, maybe you wanna like dive a little bit deeper for yourself. Um, I think that's a really good resource. But there's also other things in it too. So one, there's tons of enzymes um, and raw milk is actually like, it's self digesting, meaning it will actually break down a lot of the um, different like sugars and you know proteins maybe that um, our bodies would have to digest if 
the milk was treated. So for example, um, there's actually an enzyme present in raw milk called lactase, and it's actually what the enzyme that breaks down lactose, which is a sugar that's naturally present in dairy products. So we do have lactase in our GI tracts, but it varies from person to person, and a lot of people are lactose intolerant because they don't have enough of this lactase enzyme to break down those sugars, and then when those like full um, you know, undigested sugars end up in your large intestine, you can get all kinds of, you know, gas and bloating and just a lot of GI distress. So when you're drinking raw milk, the lactase is present and that lactose is already all broken down before you even consume it. So it can be easier, um, easier for the person to actually digest. It also has um, like immune factors in it, specifically immunoglobulins, um, which we also have in our GI tract. It's, our, it's part of our immune system. So it actually can help bolster up our immune system. There's just a lot of benefits um, that all are kind of negated when you treat the milk. Um, and when I say treat, I mean pasteurize, when you heat it to high temperatures. And especially if you are buying um, like organic milk that's like, you know, grass fed, you're like, this is like the best possible thing that I could buy from the store. That's what I thought for a long time too. Um, but that is actually ultra pasteurized, meaning it's heated to an even higher temperature and is essentially even more damaged um, than like conventional milk, which seems so backwards, but in order for farmers who are farming and or really dairy farmers who are farming organically to make ends meet, they have to have, it has to have a much longer shelf life than the, than the other stuff. So that's why you'll see ultra pasteurized. Um, which is just a shame because it's just it's even more treated and it's it's getting rid of even more of those potential benefits um, and you'll see like vitamin d or vitamin a and d is added to milk and that's because through pasteurization it literally gets essentially wiped out and so they add the synthetic version back in so that right there kind of gives you a clue into what's happening to the milk to the point where they're actually adding in synthetic vitamins to try and replace what they destroyed again i know it's controversial especially during pregnancy. Um, I'm sure one of the first things your doctor will tell you is to stay away from anything that's unpasteurized. Um, this is unpasteurized. <laughs> My milk, obviously, that I drink is unpasteurized. So I personally disagree with that. Um, I understand where the concern comes from because you obviously don't want to get a foodborne illness while you're pregnant because it can pose, it poses risk to, to you, but most especially the baby. Um, so I, I completely understand it. However, there is foodborne uh, risk of foodborne illness with like pretty much anything you eat, and there has actually been more outbreaks um, from things like cantaloupe or lettuce, um, spinach, um, like basically raw produce, right? Like you eat raw produce all the time. You eat a salad, you don't even think twice about it. Um, but th those can also contain the bacteria that can cause um, like salmonella or something like that. So. Um, there's, but what I was going to say is there's been more outbreaks linked to produce, like just in like the last few years, I think, I can't remember the exact statistic that I actually saw recently, but, um, then like that like blows out of the water, the amount of outbreaks that has been related to raw milk in like a, a large span of time. So basically the risk is present no matter what you eat. Um, if it's raw, if it's uncooked, um, it's not heated. Um, but I'll also, a lot of the nutritional benefit, um, comes from when things are raw. So it's a little bit of a thing you have to kind of weigh out risk benefit ratio for me. I personally feel comfortable drinking it um, for the tiny risk for the large nutritional benefit you may not and that's totally fine but it's something that I drink and something that I really focus on drinking especially during pregnancy so I wanted to mention it okay now the last thing I drink and now this is the only thing that is pregnancy specific all those other things I would drink at any time um, and I find them to be beneficial at any time but this one is only one I drink during pregnancy and that is red raspberry leaf tea so I bought this um, you can buy big bags of it this is just the loose tea you can also get tea bags as well um, but I just use the loose tea of red raspberry leaf tea so the reason I drink this um, while it does contain vitamins and minerals um, which is a nice little added bonus the main reason I drink it is because it is considered a uterine tonic so there's very little you know evidence-based you know claims or very little research out there on something like red raspberry leaf tea because it's just not 
it's not much of a not much of a money maker honestly so it's not something that's going to be researched heavily that's just the way that it goes but there is so much like anecdotal evidence um, and this is one of those things that's just been passed down for generations um, as far as something that can help prepare you for birth and whenever there is something like that where it's like this wisdom that has been around for a long time I that my ears immediately perk up because that's the kind of thing that I am interested in um, evidence-based stuff is is great I'm not I'm not knocking it um, I think research is important it moves us forward but also I don't think it should scare us away from looking back and looking at things that maybe our ancestors did or things that have been passed on that maybe aren't proven by science um, anyway so little uh, rabbit hole there but red raspberry leaf tea so it's essentially thought of as to be a uterine tonic it basically helps um, tone your uterus for labor and the few um, studies that have kind of looked into it basically see like shorter labor times, more productive labors, um, less need for interventions because the uterus is just basically like more in shape and more up to the task. Um, but again, there, there's not a ton of research to back it up, but I'll tell you my own personal experience. I've had it with every single pregnancy. I don't drink it in the first trimester, but I do start in the second and I start with like two cups a day. Um, and then in the third trimester, I do three cups a day. Um, and I'll show you exactly what I do. But, um, so basically I have had my first two labors, um, for a first time mom, it was quick. Um, I mean, I, it wasn't like super fast. It was not like super quick, but for a first time mom, I surprised the midwife um, with how quickly things moved along. When I first got there, I got there at like 7 a.m. And she didn't tell me this at the time because that would have totally like defeated me. But in her mind, she was like, my guess is this baby's gonna be born at 5 p.m. That was her guess upon when I arrived and I was like three centimeters. Um, but she was born at noon, so she came way faster than the midwife um, anticipated. So things did move pretty quickly, pretty smoothly. It was a very smooth labor and delivery, like no hiccups. Um, my second ended up being an induction, which should have never happened, but that's a whole nother story. Um, but I was induced and um, I was 30, not quite 38 weeks pregnant and I hold on to my babies. Like they are there. My first was almost 42 weeks. My son um, was over 41 weeks. So this was like a month earlier than my body typically likes to go. And from what my experience has been when I've have been induced. Um, so I was really afraid that this was going to be like a really long drawn out process because I just like did not think my body was ready. But it ended up being um, very quick from like start to finish. Um, like before I was even in labor, like they started administering everything to when she was born. It was about eight hours um, and it was the same kind of thing where the nurse checked me and she was like, oh, you're like a five, you're like halfway, we've got some time. And she was born 20 minutes later. So. That was that. Um, and then my third birth was a little bit different um, because it was a planned hospital birth. I did not want to be in the hospital, just being honest. Um, I have, I don't feel comfortable in the hospital setting, let's just say. And you really, it's important to feel safe and comfortable and at ease when you're in labor because if you're not and there's like this perceived threat, your body will literally stall labor. And that is exactly what happened to me. So, um, I had a complete stalled labor, which I think was way more mental than it was physical. But once things finally got going, it was very quick. It was just within like a, a few hours, I think. Um, so outside of that, my pregnancy or my, my labors and, and births have been fairly quick. So that's my testimony. Um, but I know so many women swear by it. And it's just one of those things that like I'm never going to not do it because I've always had pretty smooth ish experiences so um, I will continue to drink it so what I do is I have because um, drinking like two to three cups a day like to me to fill that many cups like it's just it would never happen um, I just <laughs> I wouldn't do it so I just make like a bigger batch at a time so um, I have this like Yeti big mug because um, you could drink it ice but I always drink it hot and it keeps it hot for a really long time which I like because I don't want to be drinking like room temperature tea it's just kind of it's not very satisfying um, so what I'll do is I will fill up I'll take like you know enough loose tea for like two cups 
and then I'll just fill my mug with that. And then in the third trimester, I just add a little bit more of the tea um, so that it's more like three cups. And then it's just that one thing that I have to drink and I'll just drink it like throughout the afternoon or whatever. Um, and I'll just, you know, try and finish it within a few hours. It stays fairly warm. Um, so then it's just like a one and done kind of thing. So that is how I actually go about drinking it daily. Okay, you guys, so that is it for this video. Those are five nourishing drinks that I drink pretty much daily throughout my pregnancy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope maybe you learned something new. Please let me know down in the comments below what other videos you would like to see from me, whether pregnancy related or not. I love hearing your guys' feedback. It really helps me um, you know, make videos that you guys want to see, which I obviously want to do. If you are new around here and you have yet to subscribe, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe to my channel, join my little community here on YouTube. But that is all I have for this video. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.